If most people knew my name, I'd be hated. I often wish I could go back to 1979. It was myself at a Steenbeck, creating something from nothing. I never thought it would be as big as it is and as it was. That their faces are as familiar to the public as presidents and movie stars. It's a nickname that goes way beyond a nickname. They are the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. It sounds so pompous. Back then, hey, it's a highlight film, has a cool title, nothing would ever come of this. Next year, I'd go on to the next highlight film. And then when the Cowboys introduced their team as the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, boy, this thing might have legs. This might be on my tombstone. It was them. We the real America's team. We're America's team. America's watching. And let's show who America's team really is. There's only one America's team. And like Uncle Sam, the bald eagle, and old glory, the Dallas Cowboys are a symbol of the Republic. America's team is number one, regardless of what we're going to lose. No other country in the world really has one professional sports team that stands for the entire nation. What's the favorite team back in Japan here in America? Das Cowboys. America's team, huh? Yeah. It was simply a magic moment when a sports team seemed to embody longings for a reassertion of American identity. America's team was a product of the 70s. Only the Cowboys had the most American of nicknames modern-day cowboy on the sideline, a national hero at quarterback. And neither of them were the franchise's biggest stars. You know where the TV cameras spend most of their time? On those girls, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Two magic words fused all that cultural power into something bigger. America's team possessed enough stars to fill a galaxy. There's only one America's team and strangely, for a country that loves a winner, the story of how the Dallas Cowboys became that team begins with a defeat. Dorsett now goes in motion. Roger back to throw, has a man open in the end zone. Cut! Touchdown! Drop! Jumped in the end zone! Jackie Smith! Oh, bless his heart, he's got to be the sickest man in America. In January of 1979, the Cowboys' reign as world champions ended with a crushing defeat in Super Bowl XIII. Every year, NFL Films would do a highlight reel, and that highlight reel was a big deal. The highlight film was an important promotional tool for the club. It was Bob Ryan and Doug Todd, the Cowboys' PR director, who were responsible for crafting this film. In the 1970s, the highlight films were the most important thing we did. In a way, it was a bunch of lies. It was almost like uh, the law according to Joe Stalin. The basic idea was a recreation of that season that was very pleasing to the team. The challenge was, what are we going to say about this uh, team that lost the Super Bowl? 
Bob proposed Champions Die Hard. I remember Doug saying, I don't think we like the idea of the team dying. From his office in Philadelphia, Ryan struggled to think up a title that Cowboys Brass wouldn't kill. A title that captured what the Super Bowl defeat could not diminish, the franchise's extraordinary popularity. The Cowboys were the most popular team in the country. Everyone knew it. When you went to other stadiums, there were Cowboy fans all over with number 12 jerseys. There were always the second game of doubleheaders on CBS. They were on Monday Night Football more than any other team. And then it came to me. I looked at what you'd call national teams, the teams that everyone loves and hates, the New York Yankees and Notre Dame. They were the national team in college. The Dallas Cowboys, the national team. And then, it came to me, America's team. America's team. When I was editing America's team, uh, I had complete tunnel vision of what I was doing because I knew I had something that I thought was going to be great. The fruition of the highlight film was five days. It only took five days. I knew what I wanted. It didn't become a jigsaw puzzle. It just fit all perfectly the minute I started to edit. John Facenda was our narrator. He was a maestro at turning Ordinary words. This one simple fact tipped the balance of the game in the Cowboys' favor. And the really good words. He had read it the night before. Yeah, I like your alliteration as always. When I came in the booth, he said, Bobby, you've given me a great horse to ride. I hope I can do it. Cowboy goals are lofty. Win the National Football Conference title and then the Super Bowl. This is usually attainable, for as their fans well know, the sum total of their stars make up a galaxy. Their record is envied, and their innovations copied down to the last glamorous detail. They appear on television so often that their faces are as familiar to the public as presidents and movie stars. They are the Dallas Cowboys. America's team. The highlight film comes out. Bob Ryan, NFL Films, and we're called America's team. I don't know how it caught on so fast, but it caught on like wildfire. America's team, they call them. America's team badly needed to win today. The Dallas Cowboys, symbol of virtue. It really took off. Obituaries were being prepared to tell us of the approaching demise of America's team. I didn't know it was going to take off like it did, but it sure did. In all the way games, most of the newspapers wrote, America's team's coming to town. Wait, 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 these guys calling themselves America's team. Who do they think they are? It wasn't as though Bob Ryan was going to call somebody America's team that year. And it could have been the Tampa Bay Bucks, but it ended up being the Cowboys. Cowboys are America's team. The Cowboys were America's team before people called them that. It was just really astute of the guy to point this out. The reason people hate the term America's team is that there's something undemocratic about just labeling the Cowboys America's team. United, we stand together. There's only one America's team. And for many Americans, that seems downright un-American. I think all 28 teams in the National Football League are America's team, not one team. Look at our Constitution, the right to choose who we want to become. That's what this country was based on, free choice. Cowboys just don't allow us to have that free choice in choosing who we want to support. Yet all teams are not created equal, and in 1979, when film producer Bob Ryan called the Cowboys America's team in a highlight film, the country yearned to be rescued. 
by a John Wayne kind of hero. I want to talk to you about a fundamental threat to American democracy, a crisis of confidence. I grew up in the 70s. The Americans are gone. The U.S. Embassy behind me has been completely looted. It was the end of the first war that America didn't win. People have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. For the first time and only time in American history, we had a president resign. Cars with odd-numbered license plates will be able to buy gasoline on odd-numbered days. It was the time of the gas crisis and hostages in Iran. Things are going so bad, I just can't see anything for an American to be thankful for at this point. America was in decline. And so you were searching for heroes. Roger Staubach and company. Roger Staubach, Tom Landry. You found those heroes in Irving, Texas, every Sunday in the fall. The Dallas Cowboys are the champions of the National Football League. Over the last half of the 1960s, there's sort of a generational conflict. And ultimately, the counterculture sort of won. And the counterculture became the culture of the 70s. The Cowboys did seem to very consciously represent the way the world had been prior to this. The Dallas Cowboys, the winningest football team in the 70s, 105 wins from 1970 till now. The idea of America's team, what they were really kind of saying is, this is previous America's team, or this is the old America's team. For traditional America and the baby boomers, the franchise had a more basic appeal. The team's nickname was a tip of the hat to the great American hero. The archetype of the cowboy was actually at the center of very early Hollywood movie making. Liberty Valance, the toughest man south of the picket wire, next to me. We had a celebration of the, uh, of the cowboy as the ultimate American man. Many a youngster would love nothing better than to grow up and be a member of the Cowboys. It was fortuitous that they called the Dallas football team the Dallas Cowboys. Definitely had a lot to do with the popularity of uh, being America's team. Do you know this man? He's the most famous cowboy in Texas. And last week he found himself in Washington, D.C., surrounded by Redskins. The cowboy nickname was something Texas E. Schramm had to fight for. When the team was founded in 1960, the club's visionary president had to talk one of the owners out of christening the franchise, the Dallas Steers. It does seem weird to imagine if they were the Dallas Steers. Here they come, America's team, the Dallas Steers. Essentially, a castrated bull would be perceived as emblematic of America. If the Cowboys were the Dallas Steers, I don't think they would have ever become America's team. They had to be the Cowboys. There's something about a cowboy that's special. It means something to people. And back then, cowboys were the biggest heroes in America. The fabric of the country was pretty much built on the Western. Heroes today have evolved to, you know, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Any shooting is done outside. I hope so. We wanted to be cowboys. And that's who we looked up to as uh, that superhero. Pilgrim, you caused a lot of trouble this morning. Might have got somebody killed. And somebody ought to belt you in the mouth. But I won't. I won't. The hell I will We all love cowboys. John Wayne was, uh, I mean, he was absolutely at the top of the list. As a kid, I played cowboys all the time. My Christmas morning was all cowboy stuff. I had my hat and my, t my, my vest. You love to have your play guns with your holster. Always playing cowboys and, uh, I guess you're allowed to say it, cowboys and Indians. 
the great TV Western shows were gone by the time the Dallas Cowboys really rose to, to, to their maximum fame. What the Dallas Cowboys represented was a popular longing to return to the classic American motif of challenging um, hardships and, and overcoming them. There's a quote by Jim Murray that always struck me. It still sticks with me until today. The America's team's Cowboys, the John Wayne Bunch, the ones that were going to come riding in to save the fort. Win the West. Hang the rustlers. Tony Dorsett is in the record books. 99 yards. And defend the Alamo. Can it happen again? Can they come back again? again! Roger back to throw, pumps it once, sends it long, it is. Caught for a touchdown. Those cowboys riding off into the sunset with a school marm, those were Tom Landry's cowboys. They call this America's team? Why no one state they don't own? They don't own Carolina! America's team is a presumptuous title. Humility has never been a hallmark of the Dallas Cowboys. Texas Stadium had that hole in the top of the dome. Any Dallas Cowboy fan would tell you this was so God could see his team play. This is so God can watch his favorite team, which is strange to assume that God can't see through domes, that he needs a hole to see the game. To call yourself America's team, even though it's based in truth, is incredibly pompous. It's like, oh, we're so much better than anyone else. From the time Bob Ryan first coined the phrase in a highlight film almost 40 years ago, millions of Americans have loved the nickname. Millions more despise it. We want Dallas! Dallas! We hate you! Tom Landry was one of them. Doug Todd, the PR man, called me on the phone. We all owe the title here, but Tom doesn't. Tom hates it. Other teams come after you much stronger than they've ever come because you are the measuring stick. Coach Landry did not like it at all. You know, let him sleep over there and don't, don't, don't arouse him. The really first real shot in the film is Tom Landry in silhouette with his hat. And you know it's Tom Landry. It knocks you out from the minute you see it. It is so special. When you see that image, I don't think you can overstate the success and the impact of Bob Ryan constructing this iconography and this idea of them being America's team. The Cowboys could not have become America's team without Landry's image. His man-in-the-hat persona tapped into the myth of the cowboy, and the coach's constant portrayal in Western iconography cast a long shadow. The profile is unmistakable. The face belongs carved on Mount Rushmore. There are a lot of similarities of the Western hero to Landry. He evoked the Wild West in what he was. What they call the shotgun. Five yards back, and Roger can see it all. They go for the shotgun. Roger looks left, fires it out there, crossed by Tony Hill. Touchdown, Cowboys! He projected the image of a cowboy. Tom Landry had a, a John Wayne kind of uh, appeal. Do you know me? I'm one of the best known cowboys in Texas. But a lot of people don't recognize me in a cowboy hat. When he did that American Express commercial with the cowboy stuff on, I'm surprised he didn't take that outfit and wear it on the sideline for a game. Wow. Because you never know when you're going to be surrounded by Redskins. Every generation's told to be more willing to express their emotions and be open about how they feel. Tom Landry was masculine but not demonstrative. He was a stoic person. The opposite of how society and culture has gone. 
The hole in Texas Stadium is not as big as the hole in any theory that attempts to explain Tom Landry, the most perplexing personality in the National Football League. No one has penetrated the gunfighter stare, the grim face that makes him look like a regional director of the FBI. Somebody asked me, you ever see Coach Landry smile? And I said, no, but I've only been here nine years. Landry was the cigarette-less Marlboro man. What is there about that that you don't want to emulate in the 70s? And politicians understood that. And I'm very proud to say that Wednesday, Tom Landry announced his personal support for my campaign. Tom Landry made people think that there really could be, once again, excellence in America based upon faith and principles and toughness. That's the way I think America's always liked to see itself. And Tom Landry was what they wanted to see in the mirror. I don't know if Tom has campaigned or not yet. People are going to look back on his career as something being very unique. You don't get a America's team image by one thing. It's a combination of a lot of different things. Most important, you had Landry, the symbol of America, being the face of America's team made Landry a target. And on a November night in 1986, the man in the hat proved his John Wayne image was no facade. We heard that there was some kind of threat. The authorities weren't taking any chances, and so they took him off the field. We would have to assume some sort of threat in regard to Landry, as we start the fourth period, it would be the first time in the history of the Cowboys that Landry has not been on the sideline. The authorities gave him the, the option of spending the rest of the game in the locker room, or they could give him this bulletproof vest and he could go back out there. Seconds ago, Tom Landry emerged from the Dallas locker room. He was a tough man. You had to come with a little more than a threat to scare Tom Landry. As we suspected, that white underpiece would be some sort of protective vest. There's no way in the world he was gonna not show up for the game. They made him wear the bulletproof vest. You wouldn't suspect any different from Tom Landry, one of the youngest bomber pilots in World War II, flew over 30 missions. Tom Landry actually got shot down and crash landed a plane. He didn't have a lot of fear. He was more concerned about someone around him who might get hit than himself. Tom, you're amazingly calm for somebody who just got their life break. I don't think much about those things, really. Uh, I mean, it's just something we have in our society today. And it was uh, part of the bizarre circus of traveling with America's team. America's team, they call them. They certainly have the most American helmet with a star on it. What other team has a helmet that looks like the kind of helmet the United States would wear if football was an Olympic sport? Like they would wear like the Cowboys helmet. America's team has made the star the most polarizing symbol in sports. He's going to the star. He's going to the star. He's going to do it again. Oh, oh, no way. Yet in the late 70s, Everyone from supermodels to superheroes wanted to wear the Stars and Stripes. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. There's only one America's team. And in a time when cornball patriotism was cool, the Cowboys couldn't have become that team without the quarterback who sweated red, white, and blue. Number 12 is the quarterback, Roger Stauffer. I don't know exactly when it started. I think it was probably associated with the fact is that we were America's team and I was a quarterback, so I was, I was Captain America. Dallas out. That was a beautiful pass from Roger Staubach to Tony Hill. Of course, I'm, I'm big on America. Roger Staubach, Captain America, led the Dallas Cowboys to three Super Bowls in the span of four years. If they'd had a different quarterback than Roger Staubach, I don't know what the legacy would have been. Once this highlight film comes out, there's no doubt that he became Captain America in all caps.
because of the face of the franchise, Roger Staubach, they were regarded as the Cowboys, you know, wearing the white hats and, and the good guys and captured the imagination of America. Who's your favorite Cowboy? Uh, Roger Staubach, definitely. Roger Staubach was America's quarterback. And that's how I really became a Cowboys fan. This was a guy who represented all the things that were great about America. Heisman Trophy winner, Naval Academy graduate, went to war in Vietnam. It is Ensign Roger Staubach now, and he's quarterbacking at a Navy supply depot in Da Nang. I miss football a great deal, yes I do. But I, I do enjoy the Navy, and I uh, have a big job over here, and that's the most important thing right now. He served four years in the Navy before he ever started playing football. I think that meant a lot to the American public. Then he came out and did unbelievable stuff in football. Roger going deep for Drew down the sideline. 20 to 25. Touchdown, Dallas Cowboys. The birth of America's team coincided with the death of the country's biggest hero. He was 72 years old when he died last night, John Wayne. The Duke's passing in June of 1979 only hastened the demise of the Western. When the Western died off and the Western hero died off, everyone wanted a new hero. Roger Staubach's probably the most heroic player, an iconic figure that ever played pro football. When you look at Roger Staubach highlights, Got away twice. Roger, you are something else. All the twists and turns he made and the plays he made out of nothing. He was like a comic book hero. 42 seconds left in the game. Redskins lead by six. Can Starbuck do it again? He rescued the day because of his daring do. Staubach throwing in the end zone, Tony Hill, touchdown! The Cowboys have come from behind, unbelievably. Staubach clearly changed the meaning of the word cowboy. He became the symbol of that. Before that, it was John Wayne or the Marlboro Man. And then after his career through the 1970s, when you said cowboy, people thought of Roger Staubach. Roger Staubach almost seemed to prove you could be successful doing all the conventional things you were told by society you're supposed to do. Roger, you have an all-American image. The Phil's George thing, everybody remembers that. Do you enjoy it or is it a burden? Everyone in the world compares me to Joe Namath, you know, as far as, you know, the idea of off the field, he's single, bachelor mm -hmm. swing, and I'm married and family, and, you know, he's having all the fun, and, you know, I enjoy sex as much as Joe Namath. <laughs> Only I do it with one girl, you know? When he says, I like having sex as much as Joe Namath, as if he's trying to sort of normalize himself and make him seem less square. It's kind of like when Jimmy Carter was like, I've committed adultery in my heart. It's an attempt to make it seem like you're a little edgier, but it has the opposite effect. He was straight as an arrow, but Roger had that little swagger. And he would come into that uh, huddle like a gunslinger and say, here's what we're going to do. Why motion, I left flip, move the ball. You always had the feeling as a Cowboy fan that if Staubach had the ball with two minutes left, we were gonna win. And I think the most powerful part of Staubach was the other team thought it too. Well, the Cowboys need a miracle. In the midst of the national malaise Jimmy Carter called a crisis of confidence, Captain America was the one figure who could do the impossible. Staubach has him in the shotgun formation. Roger. Pumps and watch. He's going long. Down the near sideline for Drew Pearson. Pearson makes the catch at the five. Touchdown! Would you believe it? Staubach hit Pearson on a 50-yard touchdown. I never heard much criticism from opponents. Negative comments about the Dallas Cowboys being America's team, but not many negative comments about Roger Staubach. Captain America. That's a fitting nickname. Up next... In 1979, the same year that film producer Bob Ryan crowned the Cowboys America's team, the franchise's popularity inspired a Hollywood blockbuster. I don't know if a similar movie about the Bears or the Packers 
would have had the national impact that North Dallas 40 did? The key to being a professional is consistency. I always watch the Dallas Cowboys. No one of you is as good as that computer. It was inevitable that the North Dallas Bulls were going to be based heavily on the Cowboys. They had a certain magnetism, America's team. The Cowboys were captivating, and their showbiz mentality left no doubt that there's only one America's team. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. You know the James Bond saying, every guy wants to be him and every woman wants to be with him. The reverse of that could also be true for the cheerleaders. The Cowboys could have absolutely not become America's team without the cheerleaders. The highlight film that changed the country was created at the end of a decade, marked by the rise of feminism. But on the Texas Stadium sidelines, America enjoyed a different kind of women's movement. The cheerleader in the 70s and before, until the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, they were college and high school girls running around waving pom-poms. It was kind of non-sexy. The Cowboy cheerleaders were revolutionary because they were sexy. You are looking live at the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. 15 to 20 times a game, the director would cut away to the cheerleaders. He keeps giving us the pictures of those cheerleaders, which doesn't hurt America. The conventional feminist view of the 1970s was that the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders were just being paraded as eye candy on the sidelines. Typical Dallas lovely, here, here. The Equal Rights Amendment was a huge push. E -E it came very close to passing and just fell short. Orthodox feminists pretended to speak for all women, but in fact, I think that the majority of women in the United States would have loved to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. The world famous Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, these girls are still the best. The idea of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders was partially to appeal to a female audience, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me now, but it seemed like how it was. When you think of America's team, the cheerleaders brought more women into the sport. They're strong, they're also sexy. When the cheerleaders came out, it was like God entered the stadium. I mean, everybody just went crazy. The man responsible for America's cheerleader-induced frenzy was general manager Tex Schramm. The master marketer knew that spectacle and substance went hand in hand, and his creation of America's Sweethearts proved instrumental in making the Cowboys America's team. Tex wanted at the games this full entertainment experience. Beautiful girls in uh, beautiful outfits, and it worked. As America was falling in love with the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, they fell in love with America's team also. The poster was one of the most iconic posters of its time, second only to Farrah Fawcett's red bathing suit poster. It's just amazing how much attention came so quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Welcome aboard the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders! The Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders will always be the most famous collection of cheerleaders. I think it's very interesting that there could be like a made-for-TV movie. I want you to make the squad, become one of the cheerleaders, and then just tell it like it is. With all the gory, sensationalized details. Looking back on it, it was actually a wonderful role because I got to play somebody that was an independent woman. Women's liberation was a very new phenomenon. It's a woman's right. It should be part of the ERA. The what? Oh, the Equal Rights Amendment. Oh, I... I guess I should know all about that, but I, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> but you do know all about the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. She definitely looks down on the whole story. Why would she even want to be dealing with cheerleaders? And in the end, she defends them because she actually ultimately respected who they were, where they came from, and what they aspired to. There just is no story. The Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders are everything that their PR says they are. I accidentally ended up in a piece of classic Americana. The number one rated made-for-TV movie was a movie by the Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders. I was astounded it got the ratings it got. The cheerleaders didn't rate highly with Tom Landry. He once told Shram they looked like porno queens. I said, Tom, 
I want to show you what the word you used means. This is what is considered not wholesome. And I put on this film, Debbie Does Dallas. What's it like to become one of football's cowgirls? Debbie Does Dallas has all the answers. He looked at that for about two seconds, and then he bolted out of the room. My name is Bambi Woods. In real life, I was a Dallas cowgirl. It was a pornographic film. It was a total ripoff of the Cowboys cheerleaders. America's team it was an easy thing to exploit. My Mr. Greenfield, how big you are. I've always dreamed of being a quarterback and making love to the captain of the cheerleaders. <laughs> it wasn't Debbie Does Denver. It wasn't Debbie Does Detroit. It was Debbie Does Dallas. The cheerleaders are America's sweethearts. You gotta do everything you can to stop that. The first showing of Debbie Does Dallas drew three members of the law firm representing the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. After seeing the film, they had the information necessary to file suit. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders went to federal court and won. In the court of public opinion, America overwhelmingly ruled in their favor. When I was filming, I got to hang out with some real Cowboy cheerleaders. I'd starred in James Bond. I was nothing. The cheerleaders were it. These are the hottest, most desired, wanted people on the planet. So America's team, I'll give them that. You're not going to use the story, Mr. Scott? No, sir. This is the West, sir. When the legend becomes fact, print the legend. America's team, when I envisioned it, Hey, this could be a good title. It's from my imagination. And from my imagination, something became real. America's team, they call them. And then it becomes fact. The Cowboys are America's team. America's team is in town. The Dallas Cowboys have come to be known as America's team. No matter how many times people try and co-opt the title, the fact is, and it's stamped as a fact. There's only one America's team, and it's the Dallas Cowboys. If you're America's team, you pay a tremendous price to be the team everybody wants to see. It's been almost four decades since NFL Films producer Bob Ryan coined the Cowboys' nickname in his Philadelphia office. It's altogether fitting and proper that the birth of America's team took place just a stone's throw away from the birthplace of America. It just gives Eagles fans even more reason to be angry. If Eagles fans needed any more reason to be angry. The America's team nickname is perfect. Because the Cowboys, when they got that nickname, did represent the best parts of America. It was not only great for the Cowboys, it was great for the NFL. Part of the reason it's good that Dallas is known as America's team is because it provides a real clear enemy for people who disagree with it. It's better to have somebody designated as this than no one. People aren't sitting around in bars discussing who is America's favorite football team. We just kind of concede that Dallas is supposed to be and you can agree with that or disagree. The name that started with a highlight film glossing over a heart-wrenching defeat has outlasted the men who gave it meaning. When the man in the hat and Captain America rode off into the sunset, America's team lived on with new actors in familiar roles. How about them cowboys? Yeah! Because the success, Tom Landry, what they had years ago, we do have a strong following throughout the country, and, and so if that's, if that's what you want to call America's team, that's fine. It's a label that got applied many, many years ago, and it's not going anywhere. It transcends whatever is happening on the field. You ask anybody who's America's team, they say the Dallas Cowboys. They don't say anybody else. Y'all need to be good to us. We are America's team. Aesthetics aside, the star on the helmet, stars on the flag. They're constantly on TV more than any other team. They're America's team because America cares a lot to still watch them. 
America's team still gets the highest ratings, sells the most jerseys, and has the most fans. The cowboy myth has faded away, and the Western is as dead as Wyatt Earp. A cowboy now is like a blacksmith or something. It belongs to a different time entirely. How many Westerns you see on TV nowadays is, is none. Nowadays, what Dallas Cowboys means doesn't have anything to do with Westerns. It doesn't have anything to do with posses or John Wayne. It must have been like this for the gladiators in ancient Rome. What Dallas Cowboy means is just that, the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys and the Westerns, they embodied what, what everybody ultimately wanted to be. And whether or not these kids today are growing up wanting to ride horses, I don't know, but I think there's a lot of kids growing up wanting to be Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. Helmets have replaced Stetsons, the shotgun, the Colt 45. Hey, Rog, I never took you for a black hat guy. A hero isn't the Duke. It's Captain America, or a man of Troy. And so, thanks to a highlight film, the cowboy lives on through one final remnant of the frontier spirit. There's only one America's team, and it reminds us while America is ever changing, always fighting new revolutions, the country's revolutionary spirit remains the same.